Hello guys, welcome back to the Coding Dojo. Finally getting into some of the coding with Node.js. Let's get into it. So I'm assuming that you guys have already gotten a chance to look at the GitHub documentation, which we have here. And we're gonna go ahead and open up the Node files. So I've got the Node files here on my local desktop. Okay, so this is on my Windows computer. So we have the readme file, which is included with your documentation. So I like to have that printed out personally because the step-by-step -step process is important. I can go ahead and open that up and show you what it looks like. This also is available via GitHub. And the very first thing it says to do is to download the node.nodejs.org uh, LTS version 10. So we're gonna do that in just a moment. The views area over here, that's where our HTML view is. And that's kind of a coder's term for like the view of our app. Then we have our app here and we have our package as well. And then inside the bin, we just have some of our www there. Okay. How do I go back? There we go. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna open up a new tab and we are going to download the node.js.org download. So the latest version is 10.15.3. Now, depending on when you're watching this, that could be updated, but I'm gonna go ahead and download the 64-bit Windows version here. Now I've already installed this, but I'm gonna take you through the process anyway um, so that you can see what it's like to get ready and get up and running for this. So of course, you've been through the whole course at this point. So you've got your camera, your PTZ Optics camera on the network, you've got IP control of it, and then you go through and you uh, install the Node.js version 10. So while that's getting set up, uh, I will go through the readme with you guys. And then as soon as that's ready to open, I'll open it right up. So we've configured our PTZ Optics camera on our network. We've cloned the repo and we have extracted it to our preferred destination. So I have all of these files available on my desktop. Now, uh, the next thing is we open up command prompt. So this is where we actually go ahead and open up command prompt. Let me see if my download's ready. Here it is here. So here's just to give you an idea. This is the node version windows here. You need to go ahead and install this on your computer. I'm not going to do it because I've already got it installed and that installs node available to you. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is open up command prompt. I'm going to put it right over here so we can get a good look at it. All right. So here's command prompt and behind command prompt, I want to have my node files open. So I'll stick it right there. All right. So now what, the first thing we need to do when we're in command prompt is we need to change the directories to where the repository is located. So to do this, we are going to type CD and we're going to type desktop slash. I just have this folder called node JS. Boom. And now you can see the difference here is that instead of looking for Paul R it's looking right in the Node.js folder. So hopefully you guys can see that. I'm gonna make just a little bit smaller of a pen mark. Okay, so now that that's installed and we're connected to the right path, we're going to type in npm install. And that is going to go ahead and install all of the Node repository information that we have. You can see here, there's 232 packets in was done in 2.14 seconds and there's zero vulnerabilities. So now we've installed our package. Now we simply need to start our application, npm start. And that takes a moment, we let it going and boom, the PTZ Aptics camera control sample HTTP service is running on port 8001, 8081, sorry. So what does that mean? Well, that means that we can go ahead to localhost 8081 and our application will actually start running. Now, I'm going to use this application to connect to this PTZ camera right here. So I'm going to stop my vMix playlist there. Boom. And this is the application that is built for you to change, update, and maybe we'll even make a small 
change to it. Um, but this is the application now running on our Node.js server. So if I go ahead and type in the IP address of the camera, 192.168.1.63 on my local area network, I'm going to choose a pan speed. And again, these are those variables we were talking about. In fact, I think that my zoom speed can only go a range from one to seven. And now I'm going to go ahead and move this camera up. Woo! Camera went up. Click it down. Camera went down. It goes right and it goes left. So we now know that our application is allowing for the ability to go right control an IP robotic camera. So now that we know it's working, let's take a look at the code. So now I'm gonna go ahead and open app.js with my Sublime text editor. And we're gonna look at this code here. So here we're adding the dependencies and declaring them to variables. Okay, so this is the way this works. We've got th four variables right off the top. We have variable express is going to equal require express. We have a variable for path, which is going to equal require path. We have a variable for body parser and, an, and a variable for request. So we're declaring, adding the dependencies and declaring the variables. Now express is a widely used minimal and flexible node.js web framework. So for more information about express, you can visit express.com or expressjs.com. So I would highly recommend taking a look at this since we are using this. Express is a fast, unoptionated, minimal web framework for Node.js. So we are using that, and that's how we use to that's how we use the npm install express example. Okay. Now from here, we're going to declare the variable app to a new express instance. So we're calling variable app equals express. Here, we are adding and configuring a middleware to the express instance. Body parser helps us read incoming HTTP requests. So we're doing app.use body parser dot URL encoded, and then we have it extended true. App.use body parser dot JSON as well. And then app set views path join. So this is the app local will make sure that the app output is readable and formatted via HTML. App locals pretty equals true. This configures the templating library dot EMC and templating engines allows the server to render specific content into our HTML code. So as you can see, we have all of this going on. We have the app engine. And then here we're telling the app to find the files we need for the templating engine using app.use express.static path.join directory name max age one. A root is the code we use to associate the type of HTTP request we receive and the URL path pattern. A route allows us to code a specific response for a specific request. In this case, we're looking for any post request that was sent with a URL ending in cam control because that is in all of the http requests inside the function you will find req and res which represent request and response objects the request and response objects represent the data that is received and sent to the user respectively so then we have app post camera control function and the body parser middleware grab the data included with the request and place it in the request body to see what else is inside the request body object, uncomment the code, remove the slashes, and below and run the app again. You can look at console.log request body to see it. Now here we are, the res.json is the response data we will send back to the client and the data will get sent as JSON. And hopefully we'll get JSON slash success. We'll render and send the HTML files to the requester. This function, a URL string, and sends the get HTTP request to the URL. Then we're using the function send camera control, which is taking our URL, requesting the URL, sending the method get. We can use a function here if there is an error to uh, parse out in the console whether there was an error or was successful. 
Now the comment below is used for automating documentation, and we'll learn a little bit more about code documentation. Um, what we're showing here is the build URL is based on the IP address and the action. So here we're taking the IP address from the web page, depending on what it wants to be, and we're putting it in here. So you can see here that we have all of the different actions already reached out here, and then we have all of the parameters. So these are the parameters that we we're building into our HTML. And then we have our base URL, which has all of the information in it. And then we'll build the URL. We'll create an HTTP CGI command using the data passed to it. And once finished, it will return the processed URL to the function that it called. Now, here we are building the function. And to learn more about switch statements, we actually have a couple links here that you can take a look at. Um, this is all of the switch statements here. And then we export the app.js file to our server configuration in the bin www. Now let's take a look at the HTML. So all of that JavaScript, as we've talked about in this course, is what powers the HTML. So the HTML, which we were looking at in just a moment there, let's take another look at it here. This is it. It's controlling our camera, right? This is the user interface. That's why we looked at HTML and CSS earlier in this course, clearly this interface uh, could be enhanced. And that's going to be one of our coding challenges in our next video. I think we really need to just rethink this interface. But regardless of that, let's take a look at the HTML again. So as you can see here, we, do, we are using some CSS, and this is just the latest compiled minified CSS bootstrap CDN. Um, we have a form. So in this form, we have a bunch of different classes, and you can see here we've got some placeholders for pan speed. We have tilt speed, zoom speed, and focus speed. And sometimes when I'm looking at this kind of stuff, I like to look half and half like that. So we can see that we've got all of those, and they're represented. That's one, two, three, and four. And then also I shouldn't forget this camera IP address. So all of those are built out in the forms here, and they have a name of cam IP, pan speed, tilt speed, zoom speed, focus speed. Then down here, here's our JavaScript. So we've got all of these buttons that allow us to fire action up, fire action down. These are all JavaScript there that's allowing us to initiate the JavaScript from a button press. So all of that is our JavaScript. And you can see here that we have a little bit of jQuery coming in, just so that we have the jQuery library available to us. And then we are defining the function fire action. Now, as we looked at, this code was actually parsed out as well in the Node.js file that we were looking at earlier, the app.js file. But as you can see here, we have a parameter, and the parameter is the IP address, and the action, which we're firing action here, what we're actually going to be sending, it could either be up, down, left, right, for example, and these are all the different buttons that are available. Now, the parameter that we're passing to the action, right, is the variables of either over here, if I clear these out, you can see them better. Pan speed, tilt speed, zoom speed, focus speed. So those are all the variables that we can pass to the action that's being fired right there. And then finally, there's an Ajax post for the parameter, which uses the URL. And it's pretty well documented here. So I think that's where we'll leave off on our node.js programming. Hopefully that gives you a good idea of the way that this application is set up. As you'll see, it's well documented with comments throughout the code to help assist with you building your own applications using HTML, JavaScript, and Node.js. I hope you enjoyed our tutorial video. Next, we're going to look at Python. Python is a great programming language for issuing commands like this. And of course, we're going to talk about our coding challenge. Bye, everybody.